Yo, this could be a finals preview, but in the meantime, there's a freight train coming to Sixers' way, a team that's won 11 straight. Boogie Cousins making his home debut at Oracle in the process. And Boogie, they've had their history. They seem to get along well on the court by being competitors and looking at the numbers the last five games. They've definitely been putting numbers up on the board. Can't wait to see that match. I'd love to see two bigs going at two traditional bigs. You really don't see that anymore because we know the five has kind of been uh, – Swept up under the rug for the most part. Well, that's why I want you. I want you to help use a different word than traditional. You know why? Because the traditional big men could not pop out to the wing and ISO. So that's why I've been trying to help. He was like, no, traditional big men would get cross screens or back screens to the post, bang bang, baby hook, bang bang, maybe kissed off the glass. These two jokers right here, they can pop out to the three point line, jab jab, and shoot the three like a wingman. That's the difference. As much as I love that guy across the hall, Shaq can never do that. As much as we love the dream, maybe a little bit. David Robinson, maybe a little bit. But these two, it's a totally different level, bro, because they can go right, they can go left. And now with the new NBA, they step back. Step no back. center could step back and shoot the three. <laughs> so that's why I've been trying to tell people, change the word traditional because that is the true difference from the Patrick Ewings and the Lonzo Moynes of the world because – if those guys were trying to do this now, they'd be a fish out of water because they want to get down low and bang and be physical. So to your point, it's fun to see two guys that have the fundamental skills to do both. That is true. So traditional big men, but they have uh, expanded their horizons. Oh, yes. Looking yes, at Joel yes. Embiid, well, I just Boogie Cousins. Over the last five games, shooting 55% from downtown. Talking to Boogie in, in Washington the other night for the players' only game, he's like, I'm still getting used to being wide open all the time. I'm still getting used to guys paying, or should I say, making that extra pass. And now I'm no longer the best player on the floor most nights. So now to buy into that and understanding that this team is willing to share every night, Yes. that's why you see the flow and everything starting to come a little naturally. Last but not least, Ro, once he gets in better shape, the fouls will come down too. Because right now he's using his hand instead of moving his body. All that's going to come better and better after the All-Star break. Oh, and by the way, you want to make sure you pay attention tonight because that game is going to be on TNT. And there's a legend that made history once upon a time. His name was Jackie Robinson. Ooh, he look was at on them shorts, hey, Jackie. He was nice on the baseball diamond, but he was nice on the court. We got he something special for you coming too. up. Oh, yes, he what? did. Yes, he did. There is Blake Griffin getting shots up. Well, he be named a reserve for All-Star Weekend. We're going to find that out shortly. In fact, around 7 o'clock, you can turn into TNT where you'll find that off the show. There Ooh, you Ooh, it's cold, boss. It's so that cold. That means it's cold. Top two teams in the East, <laughs> one known for its offensive firepower, leading the NBA in scoring, while the oh, other is for defense. Uh, Giannis said, nah, I'm so Giannis chilly bringing right the heat. Now. Giannis bringing the heat. Yeah, that's I, both. See, I see you, Snell, with the Scully. Oh, yeah, they both bringing the heat tonight. Both oh, make I'll, I'll, I'll trade for you, Thought. That. <laughs> make oh. I'll trade for you. And well, the cel hey, 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 hey y'all remember the celebration of the championship? Yeah. Yeah. still legendary. Oh, He's that's still out in the streets, though. Uh, Fast forward to present day, that is Mr. Bell, Gold State. Out there on the runway to ref to check. So, hey, at least uh, I know it's not cold there because he got them short shorts on. Hey, hit them folks one time. <laughs> you guys are going to ask about the trade. I can't. Um, really talk about it until it's until the trade call is done. Um, according to what I've heard, that could be sometime around six o'clock um, Eastern time. Could be a few minutes earlier. Could be afterwards. Um, so, uh, other than that, <clears throat> really can't comment on it. A blockbuster six-player trade that you might not have been expected. Chris Porzingis in a seven-player deal going to the Dallas Mavericks. Got Kenny Jet Smith here, Mr. Players Only, Dennis 3D Scott. We're top it up about all of this. Get to the bottom. See who won the deal. 
this trade right here that broke this afternoon. Of course, you're now rocking with the best officially. Ro Parrish here along with the aforementioned esteemed colleagues of mine, between Jeff Smith, Dennis 3D, Scott, players only. Real quick, Ro, can you explain to our fans and viewers, though, why Porzingis didn't get traded versus Anthony Davis and his representation getting traded? Because, Kenny, when that happened, I was like, wait a minute, why does Anthony Davis get traded? I don't remember Carmelo getting traded, I mean, getting fined. I don't remember Kyrie getting fined when he asked to be traded. So explain to people so they understand why the difference on this trade, why no one's in this uproar for Porzingis. So basically breaking down like 3D asked me to do, when you go to your agent and put out an official press release releasing it to the media, that's why the NBA chose to fine Anthony Davis 50K earlier on Monday for requesting a trade publicly. He had to do that, though. Why, why do you have to do it? Because Anthony Davis is in a different position. He's in a position of uh, trying to let everyone know that he's given the, the Hornets an opportunity to make a trade Pelicans. and get asked the Pelicans rather to get make a trade in New Orleans to make a trade and get assets back. Uh, if he did not do that, he could have looked selfish and said, oh, I'm just waiting and waiting. And then I don't go to the team I possibly want to play with and then then go somewhere else. So now it gives the true teams who are that he would actually sign with the opportunity to do it. And it makes everyone a little bit better and he'll take the 50,000 fine for that. We talk about making everybody better. Let's talk about this deal right here that's on the table and see who it makes better. Break oh. it down a seven. This was crazy, man. You Ooh. see the Knicks, they received Jordan, Matthews, Dennis Smith Jr. and two first round draft picks. Meanwhile, the Mavericks get Trey Burke, Courtney Lee, Tim Ooh. Hardaway Jr. and Mr. Unicorn. So looking Ooh. at this at this deal I right didn't now. I Courtney Lee was involved too. Yeah. Well, hey. That's serviceable. Yeah, Trey serviceable. Burke also Trey Burke's played better, kind of rejuvenated, res so to resurrected speak. Resurrected his career with the Knicks. We know, we know what Tim Hardaway Jr. does. Kenny, he knocks down he shots. Done. And now the question is, how healthy is Porzingis? Will he play this year now, Kenny? Was he setting out? Was New York Knicks holding him out? You know, so that type of stuff for me he needs to come out now, Kenny, say, yes, the physical, we're going to go through all that process, see where his leg is and so forth. But right now, Kenny, Dallas looks pretty good in this deal. Pretty good. Like, I mean, <laughs> like, like, like you would say, forget the guys there, Luka Doncic. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you have the possibly the youngest up-and-coming up superstar, not star. The difference between all-star and superstar, Luka has a chance to be a superstar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you, you're adding Porzingis, who has a chance to be not an all-star, but a superstar. Too. So you, 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 you're putting the, in the West the, the, the dimension of what everyone else around the West has. Yeah. So you look at Golden State, you look at you know the Lakers, what they're trying to do, and everyone else is trying to blend. They are the... They're saying, okay, Golden State, when you have that fall off and or and one of those guys lead, leave, now we're right there because you can't really put a team together to compete with Golden State every night. Right. But you have to be the one ready when Golden State leaves. When when Boogie leaves next year, maybe one of those free agents leave, and all of a sudden we're in the mix. You cannot compete with the current team. So they understand that. I, I think – and then put in Tim Hardaway as the third or fourth best player on your team. Shot, another and shot maker for the But he, you know, where with the yeah. Knicks, he's your best player yeah. right now. And now he's their fourth best player possibly at times. That, to me, you know, I would say right away. And the Knicks would just say, hey, we're, we're going for free agency. I'm glad That's that you it. brought up that point because that is how we do in TV with segue. Looking at free agency, the potential free agents. That's that a big gamble. Available. Now, Huge gamble. If the two players away, talking about Wesley Matthews and DeAndre Jordan, that could potentially create $74 million in cap space available for the Knicks to potentially bring in one of these. Kimba's going home. Kimba's going home, Kenny. You think so? Well, you I'm think just saying. Cause I, but no, you think about this. Leave that, can you leave that picture up for one second? Can we put that picture back for one okay. second? Because KD, we, I don't think KD and Clay are never going to – I don't think they're going to stiff the mark. I but think, think about this. Can. Okay, let's say KD and, and, and Clay and, okay. and, and Kawhi Leonard are – Stay where they are, and and your your two free agents are Kimball Walker and, and Jimmy Butler. You're not better than with Co Co uh, with KP exactly. with Porzingis. Exactly. So you have to. This is a huge gamble, hoping that a, a Kevin Durant, a Leonard, a Kyrie Irving, well Kyrie Irving and a Clay Thompson, someone else is coming to your team. That's a huge gamble. Um, 
Yeah, that's a gamble. I don't know if I could have taken at this point. Um, yeah, it's just a huge gamble. I'll just leave it as that. Well, I mean, talk <laughs> no, about how much, it's, I mean, looking back at the Knicks over the years, they've gambled a lot this summer of 2010. And they've been, and they've been coming they up are, short every year. So they only get, they I say only, they signed Amari Stoudemire in 2010. They got an old Amari. They got a banged up Amari. Yeah, they did. The Knicks <laughs> have been doing really, you know, Steve Mills and, and, and Scott have been doing um, some really good things. This is a huge gamble that, you know, you, you're swinging for the fences. And you, you, you have to understand what the, the climate is of the free agencies, what free agent uh, players are. You have to have your ear to the street. You have to have your ear to the gym. Mm-hmm. And you have to have your ear to the families. So you have to know a lot to make a move like this, knowing that there is a real strong possibility of what guys are feeling internally. Right. Because this is an internal feeling. Because, you know, you look at Paul George last year. Yep. This guy Point. turned down the Los Angeles Lakers, the story franchise mm-hmm. in the city that that is just offers everything that he has, a hometown product, and he stays in Oklahoma. So to make a gamble like this, to me, that the, the Paul George of last year would make me hesitate on gambling and say, they no, I'm going to I'm going to trade for someone. <laughs> right. Right. To get them in and right. convince them to stay before I try to get them in free agency. Well, the trade that is yet to happen is the one where Anthony Davis exits the Pelicans. Oh, he's out. Ashton, uh, it hasn't taken place just yet, but <laughs> Alvin Gentry, he's already over it. To me, it, to, to, to be honest with you, it really pisses me off if you want to know the truth, if you want me to speak in layman's terms. Right. Because you should ask us if we feel like second class citizens. And I can tell you right now, that is the farthest from the truth there is. There is nothing that we ask for or we want or anything that they won't give us and Mrs. B won't give us to try to help us win games. So uh, whoever wrote that, you know, you're actually full of shit if you want to know the truth. Ooh, earmuffs, kitties. So when you when you hear him say it's like we're a second class franchise organization, what is that? How do you react to hearing? Seven that years, thing? man. Like, I think it was seven years he's been. Here? Seven years is a, a, a is that mark for most great players, and they say either I'm going to be here for the rest of my career, or I'm going to move. It, it has nothing to do with. I don't even think the New Orleans Pelicans being a second-class organization has nothing to do with that. Mm-hmm. You know, they treated him with the utmost respect. They tried. They brought in Boogie Cousins last year. They tried. They brought in Nurechek. They brought in Rondo. They signed Hol- Holiday. You know, they have made some moves that would be, you know, could possibly put him in position, but it, it just hasn't. So he's saying this is the seven-year mark, and that is the indicator. I don't even, I don't even know off the top of my head when when Chris Webber was a free agent when when Akeem Olajuwon like all of these guys that, from the past and now you bring LeBron James in his seventh year what did he like that's the year mm-hmm. when guys say I'm gonna stay here forever or I'm gonna leave. And I, no, in that last point, I think this past year by not bringing back Rondo, we know Boogie's uh, injury kind of made everyone hesitant. I think if you'd have done a few more things to Kenny's point, and after talking to Rich Paul at the game the other night, that was a deciding factor. That in year seven, you're not making the moves that makes us feel comfortable that we want to stay here for our whole career. That's why Rich Paul did what he did. Well, it makes sense so far in those seven seasons, the Pelicans have only made it to the postseason twice. I don't even think it's the moves, though, and D. I don't okay. think it's the moves that they make. Because I think those moves that they made, were, they were going for it, in a sense. It just didn't work out. Now, it's like... We, you tried, but it just, you know, that wasn't the girl I wanted to take to the prom. Or I even could get to a, I couldn't even get a prom invitation. <laughs> you couldn't get the invitation. Because I didn't get you to the playoffs. Get the dinner, huh? You couldn't I get the dinner, huh? You couldn't get the dinner, huh? Dinner. So now it didn't work out. It doesn't have anything to do that you didn't do all of the things. You brought the flowers. You bought the candy. You, you set up the, the limousine. It's just nobody, <laughs> you opened the limousine and nobody was in it. You know, no playoff was inside right, of that right, limousine. Right, right. Three day, any more prom day commentary? <laughs> no, I, we, I, I think we hit on the hit. I just wanted to make sure the casual fan understood. No doubt. We got so much, you know, you know, Twitter, oh, how come all this guy get fined and that? I just want everyone to understand why the process was the way it was. Well, that's what we're here for, to give you knowledge, everything. Trade Deadline Show is coming up. We are going to have it here for you. Make sure you keep it locked on NBA TV. February when is that? 6th. 
Man, I might, I might come in for that. I mean, you yeah. might have to, Jack. I might just fly in early for that I mean, one. you might as well. Yeah. Whack to back Thursday yeah. and Wednesday, we got you covered. Check the times are on your screen. But tonight, that's Giannis. You know, the Bucks have gone 11-3 in January, oh, tied with the on. best mark in the NBA. They visit the Raptors, who have the second best record at home in the East, 21-4. Who's going to win tonight? It's on TNT. More He'll never tonight. get traded. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he can! I wasn't sure if I could do that still. You good? You good? You good, Lefty? What do you want to do? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I got nail. I'm nail. I'm nail. I'm low. I'm low. Here you go, here you go. Right here. Help. We out. We out. Get it up. Get it up. Get through, yep, 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 yep. Here you go, ball here. Here you go, go ahead. Now you gotta get that right leg around. Get that right leg, there you go, yes. You keep doing that, you money. Keep going. Uh, hard work on three, one, two, three. Vince Carter firing up the troops here in Atlanta during practice. He turned 42 mm. years of age this week. 42. That's amazing, he's still playing. Yeah. It's unbelievable, and he's still in the rotation. He's still getting minutes, and he's he's still reasonably productive. He's still dunking. 37-plus percent from three, still getting dunks here and there. No, it's pretty remarkable. Great career, and, and for him to still, after all these years, yes. all that mileage out there playing, having fun, the love of the game, being an impact in the locker room and on the court. Um, Y'all might be a new trendsetter, Grant, with the Atlanta Hawks. The first player-coach broadcaster. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think Vince, right, I've yeah. done games with him. Kind of, he's do already it. done some broadcasting. Just play like in the second quarter. Yeah, and then then go back to the halftime, sure, do halftime <laughs> media, and then play and then coach. During his regularly right. scheduled breaks, right. he just wa walks over to the table and it's sits down with Bob Rathbun and Dominic. No, uh, during the game, why not? <laughs> Pre and post show and halftime, <laughs> and then play and then coach a little bit. He can do that. Yeah, he he began his NBA career. Before the, the two first round picks, Kevin Herter and Trey Young were even born. Wow. That, that is amazing. That's a, but, the, but the benefit, obviously, in Atlanta to have a guy like that, mm -hmm. a, a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer, uh, you know, a guy that, that they may not have remembered because he was so young, but a guy that had an impact on the game, uh, that has value, who can contribute in the locker room. Uh, his locker is sandwiched in between John Collins and Trey, Trey Young, and, and that's intentional by Lloyd, Lloyd Pierce because his – you know, his just experience, his professionalism, mm -hmm. everything about him. Uh, and then the, on top of that, what he's still doing on the court, yes. it, it, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, what a, you could talk to the guys, Trey and John Collins, just I would talk to them about every trying to absorb everything. Also, longevity. What is he doing to be able to play at this level for this long? I, it's remarkable to have a guy like that. They, it's invaluable for John Collins and this entire, you know, Hawks organization. What, what can Trey Young pick up from Carter, and what have you, what have you liked about him? Well, I, I, I think if I'm a rookie and I, I'm really going to ask Vince, you know, the dog days of the NBA, my shooting percentage, what do I need to do? And I think he's turned that corner. The game against the Clippers, I thought it was one of his best games. Not numbers-wise. Mm -hmm. The reason for me, Grant, was you're going up against Avery Bradley, one of the best, Patrick Beverly, and then you have Lent and the other rookie in Shea Gilgis Alexander. That to me, the way he continuously drove the basketball, making plays in the paint, I thought it was his best game of the season. You know, I, I think to Smitty's point earlier, um, in, in terms of just showing them how to take care of the take care of yourself, your longevity. You know, Trey is a smaller guy. Um, you know, I think he working on his body. Um, you know, as a small guy, he's going to have to be very uh, intentional. He's going to have to be very. Uh, strategic in terms of what he does, taking care of himself. Like a lot of young guys these days, you know, you don't nutrition, training, diet, all that stuff. You know, you, you can get by just on talent. And now at this level, you know, he's come in and made a great impact and shown that he belongs. But do you want to be special? And what does it take mm -hmm. to get to that level as a guy who's a smaller guy? And Vince, having been around, played with some greats, he's a great himself. I just think understanding how to like take care of your body, be a professional, all those things. Not just for Trey Young, but for all those guys, but particularly for Trey, who's got the toughest job in a, in a, in a league at the point guard position where every night is a tough, a tough matchup. So 
Um, but yeah, he, he's invaluable. He, he's been awesome, and I think he has another year left in him. I do too. Uh, Hawks, Blair, Coach out broadcast. of town, as you probably heard, the Super Bowl is here in Atlanta this week, so not coincidentally, the Hawks are out of town on a long road trip. Seven games, they're two and one so far, and over his last two games, Trey Young has averaged 28 and eight assists a game and shooting nearly 64% mm -hmm. from the field. All right, we'll. Uh